Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris here, CG Aviator, with a first look review of the H125 by Karen Simulations for Microsoft Flight Sim. We are loaded up in the Manila Bay project by Clifford. I'll put the link in the description below for anyone that wants to check this out. And if you're a rotor nut and you love flying these things around here, this is a particularly good package of scenery. Lots of adventures to be had here, and I'll show you some of that as part of this review. But this helicopter is available now. It's $33 or equivalent from the Karen Simulations website. I recommend you checking out their social media and website for the latest information as it may have updated since I released this video. So in this video I'll show you inside, outside, animation, sound, startup, features. There's four variants you get included in this package. I'll show you all of those as well as all the good, the bad, the ugly and the excellent. And there's a lot to cover so let's dig into it. So I have to say the PBR texturing on the outside looks fantastic. The liveries are really nice and there are a hundred. So this helicopter has to have broken some sort of record here with 100 liveries available at purchase. These come with the package and there is something for everyone. In my opinion, the modeling is excellent. The PBR is even better. If you notice the metal exhaust, the shininess of the body and those black panels on the back of the boom, particularly nice and stand out really well. The text and lines on the paint jobs on the liveries look really nice from a distance, from about three or four meters away. If you like putting your nose on the paintwork and really getting up close, you notice it is a little bit blocky around the edges. But I'm not going to complain because from a normal perspective, they look very nice indeed. There are a lot of added extras to have on the outside. You can see the nose mirror that we have fitted here, and I'll go through those in just a minute. So here we are in the cockpit of the 125, and in just a minute, I'll take you through all the extra features you get inside here. Let's have a look at some of the animations. So of course the doors are all movable. They're a little bit tricky to get to. There's a click spot here somewhere uh, there for the sliding door to the aft. And you can also move the windows and that does change the volume of the engine and rotor blade if the engines were running. You can also jettison the windows, which is kind of cool, or jettison the doors. If you want them back, you can use the click spot in the, uh, in the handle to the front right. What I would say is that handle click spot is quite large. So if I move my mouse off to the right hand side, you'll see that it stays highlighted. So I prefer a smaller click spot, but overall it's a nice, easy functionality. Down to the right hand side, there is also a space that you can have a no step cover. Uh, for a little window down there so that's cool and on the cockpit front there's also click spots available for showing a dme readout you can also remove the radout if you wish and on the left hand side you can change your garmin screen from a uh, 650 to a 430 uh, should you choose to do so there's some extra bits in terms of the engine readouts and we'll do that once the engine is started but otherwise you get a familiar six pack uh, radout included and some extra switches to the right hand side which are a uh, hide down wash dust and hide heat exhaust uh, blur effect so that's kind of nice to have those available this button here is a nav source it does have gps and uh, the usual navigation sources but i thought this was a button for a while because it faces perfectly at me but actually it's a click and drag switch so that's worth bearing in mind if you're struggling to change the uh, navigation sources down underneath the uh, GPS, we have the usual um, battery generator and avionics switches. A lot of the switches you have in other helicopters are buttons here. So various tests that are functional. We'll go through startup in just a minute. Another GPS screen, a uh, navcom screen uh, or panel and the usual transponder. On the collective control, and apologies if I ever refer these to <laughs> as throttle and stick and rudder because I'm a fixed wing pilot by heart, uh, but on the uh, collective we have landing light and taxi light we also have a hydraulic switch and a float switch if you want to blow the floats and we'll fit those and demonstrate that in just a minute and we'll put that to idle uh, no buttons on the cyclic in fact there is a button on the cyclic it's the uh, your pitch trim switch now you can assign longitudinal pitch axis uh, to your usual trimmer functions uh, and that works nicely and the longitudinal set i think it is uh, that will have you resetting your trim so they're really useful if you want to cruise for any length of time on the overhead panel, we've got the engine start switch, uh, EBCAU test switch, I have no idea. Some dimmable lights, and I'll show you the night lighting later as well. And a rotor brake and the fuel cutoff will move those forwards. I think it's about time to have a look in the back cockpit and show you all the features there. So I've set up some custom camera views just so that I can show you from this perspective what you get. And it's all under the weight and balance page. So let's go and have a look at that. Here's the weight and balance page. I do find occasionally, in fact, it's working fine today, but if sometimes it pops up with um, blank uh, text or d blank text spaces here. So all you have to do is hit the reset button and it will go back to normal. Not sure why that happens. It hasn't happened this time, so that's all cool. Uh, you'll notice that you can adjust things that you have in cockpit using pounds. Unfortunately, I like uh, kilos as part of the um, 
uh, setup that I have. So it'd be really nice if they included the Kilo equivalent. And I'll include those in the description below should you wish to uh, to use the Kilos function. So Copilot, let's start off with him. I'm not going to go through them all in too much detail. Uh, but here's Copilot you can have in front. And the nice thing about him is you can click to swap it to a headset, uh, a headset or a helmet. So that's a nice touch. We'll get rid of him because he gets in the way. Uh, passenger wise, we can have uh, a couple of passengers here. We also get medics in the uh, HEMS or medical version. So he's over there and we have a lady parked over here. So probably the better looking um, passengers, I'd say, on any models that I've seen so far. So they're available as you wish. The other thing I'd say here is that um, this is screaming out for like an iPad because there is a lot of adjustment. You can see all the options you have. It really needs something that I can just click. Uh, and the other thing is the variants of this helicopter are based here. So medical around the world, utility, and what you can see now, which is the passenger. But I'd prefer to see that in the um, in the aircraft selection, the world map area of the sim, so that you don't have to faff around with the different weights here because you kind of know what you're going to fly. But that's a nuance. It doesn't really affect the, the operation of the helicopter. It's just a nicety at this, at this stage. So let's have a look at the medical setup. Here's the medical setup. You can see you can click to hide the medic. That click spot is still there in the passenger version, but you don't get the medic unless you're in this uh, HEMS version. You can also click to remove the patient, so that's kind of cool. If I zoom in, you can notice that uh, the equipment in the back is very low resolution, which is a shame, especially when compared to the headset. So it'd be nice uh, at a later update to, for these to be improved a little bit. Let's get rid of this zero, and we'll show you around the world. So around the world is this with backpack. Now the backpack is spectacularly good quality. I mean, look at that. You get a fishing rod. So this is touring the world kind of style, if that's what you want. It doesn't look like they're clickable to, to put them out of the aircraft and set them up, um, but they look nice nonetheless. And finally, we have the utility uh, crate version, which is just cargo. If you think of it that way, you can have boxes in the back. So that is the four different variants you can have, including the passenger version. I'd prefer to have those separated out in the main page. Now let's jump to the outside and have a look at the extra features on the outside. So I've gone ahead and added all the bells and whistles to the outside so you get to see them. We have a searchlight at the back. That is not functional, but I think they have plans to make it functional in future updates. We have uh, this horizontal pad underneath the uh, skid, which is, I think, it's bare paw. You can also see the floats are there. The floats are functional. We'll demonstrate those once we get things started. There's a sling in the belly of the aircraft. Very nicely modeled indeed. I don't think it's functional, but it looks really great. And you can activate the searchlight and the sling model from in cockpit. You can press a button for those to appear. Also moving around the front, you've got the nose mirror. Now Microsoft Flight Sim mirrors are pretty poor anyway. It is reflective and it does show lights when you have them switched on, but it's not a particularly good mirror, so we'll remove that for flight. And we have the big old camera, so if you've got aspirations to fly police helicopters, there's certainly liveries for you to do that. This isn't functional, but it's there to make it look good at the moment. And there is a crew position in cockpit, but I think in future updates uh, that will become functional. So that will be a very nice feature to have. There's a few, uh, there's a bit of flickering going on there, but um, you're not going to notice it whilst you're flying along. And this is because we're looking in from drone camera. That doesn't happen in cockpit. And then you have the basket, so Alpine. Uh, moving of gear there's a basket on the outside so that's nice as well so there is a lot of stuff and that's why i say it'd be really nice to have an ipad where you can click or separate maybe a police version of the helicopter so it already has the camera and maybe the searchlight enabled but there you go that is the outside of the helicopter it's time to get this beast started okay it is time to start this thing up we've got all the doors shut everyone seems to be clear there is a checklist that is available with the pack. You get a condensed checklist, which is one page, and you get a more full and complete checklist if you so wish. But there's nothing in terms of a manual that tells you the features and how to operate this aircraft. Very much just the checklist. So I'm going to fumble my way through. I'm not going to follow it. Hopefully I don't make too many errors, but feel free to call me out if I do. Um, but we've checked the doors. We'll check the rotor brake is forward. We'll check the emergency cutoff is forward. The engine start switch should be on the off position for the moment. On the front panel, we can see that all the switches are down and off. The battery is off and everything else seems to look good. The light switches are off and off. And we've got the uh, throttle set to the idle position. I haven't found an off position for the throttle. It's just one click for idle, one click for flight. Uh, and that is all we need there. Let's put the battery on. And we'll put the anti coils on so people can see us. And we'll put the fuel pump on. You can just about hear the fuel pump in the background. 
we are now good to start. So what we'll do is we'll have a look overhead. We'll select this start switch. So you can see on the center panel that the N1 is increasing. The rotor should start rotating very soon. Now let's have a listen from the outside. How good does that look? Okay, that uh, looks like we've started well so far, but I think it's a bug. It might be me doing something wrong, but every time I start this helicopter up and then shut it down to do a demonstration and then try and start it again, I get stuck at like 59% on the N1. I get this battery temp clicking and it just seems to be stuck because the rotor RPM is at 237. I need that to be 300 for ground idle and about 400 for flight. So the only way workaround I've found, and it might be cheating, is to slew away and slew back. So I'm going to do that quickly and hopefully it'll then spring that RPM back up to where it should be. Okay, so you'll notice that that, uh, that trick has done the, uh, done the job. The rotor RPM has gone all the way up to 650, and now it should settle down by 300. What we're actually looking for is our uh, engine RPM to be, or N1 to be 67%, I think it is, and then we can put our generator on. We can actually put the uh, throttle to flight. We can guard the engine switch. Oh, there's also a headset up here, I forgot to mention. There's headsets, that's pretty cool. And what else we've got? And horn can go on because uh, now we're in the green arc, it's not going to go off, and the avionics can go on. So the generator, not the generator, so the uh, Garmin's can start synchronizing. We'll also put the pito on. Forgot to check the uh, lights. Let's just say I did that before, but you can check all the different uh, lights and even the hydraulics for the accu test. Those are all done. We can go floats arm so the floats are now armed we'll demonstrate those very shortly here's the sling and the searchlight button they'll actually enable the modeling on the outside rather than the weight and balance page but nothing further than that put our squawk in done and we'll have the flight plan in once the uh, once everything is working cool we are now started up so let's get this thing airborne. Now I found that this is not a rocket ship like the 500E was. You have to treat this more like a family saloon, maybe an old Volvo. Uh, so very smooth on the throttle movements. You can see with flight uh, on the throttle, it's now 396. That's what you're looking for. And it's very sensitive to throttle movements. So let's do it gently first. Now the first thing you'll notice with this is it likes to sit right skid low. Let's move away. But it is very smooth, it's a little bit sluggish, which is nice, but it is a utility helicopter for the most part. Still requires a lot of balance, but not a lot of rudder pedal against the torque when you first take off, which is unusual. A lot of helicopters require a decent amount of rudder pedals. Rudder, look, I'm doing it again. What I mean is anti-torque pedals uh, to stay straight, but this is a very simple to fly. Still twitchy, I'm still having to move the cyclic quite a lot to stay in one place. Let's have a little look at the pedal turn. That's to the right. Oh, didn't like that. Neither did Microsoft Flight Sim. <laughs> very, very nimble with the rudder pedal. So again, worth being nice and smooth. So whilst we're here, I'm going to demonstrate and probably crash as a result. What happens when you slam the throttles down? So let's have a look at the controls uh, like this. Here we go. Full power. So the rotor blade RPM is going down through 300. The torque. The torque is actually 33%, and now we are in a descent, so it doesn't like it. So in order to fix that, I'd have to bring the power back, get the RPM back up, and then apply some power. Yeah, it doesn't work. So if you slam the throttle up, if you slam the throttle up, you're going to find yourself descending very quickly. Now you heard in the background the floats deploy. Oh! <laughs> Let's just move out of the way of him. Sorry about that. 
There we go. So we're in the water and the floats deployed automatically because we have them armed. But you can see that they are cut out into the water. Doing something very strange. It's probably something to do with the environmental box they can put around it functionality wise. Hopefully they can fix that because it does look a little strange. But the floats themselves look nice. And if I lift off here, ooh, flying from outside view, dangerous. There we go. They do look very nice indeed. Oh, that's challenging. So in order to repack them, you need to be out of the water if you've got the floats armed or just switch off the floats arming. And then you need to press the low floats on and off. And I found that works. Oh, I'm doing, I need three hands for that. There we go, and the floats are repacked. Okay, so we found out that you can't slam the, uh, I may have called it throttle, I didn't mean to call it throttle, the uh, collective. So let's put it smoothly up up we go, watch out for the flamingos. So I'm smoothly applying that collective. The torque is going up to 77%, but the rotor RPM is doing fine. And we are up and climbing at around about 2,000 feet a minute. Now VRS isn't uh, modelled in this like it wasn't in the 500. I'm not sure if Microsoft Flight Sim supports it or whether it has to be a coded workaround, but there's no VRS at the moment. So let's just demonstrate that quickly. We've got zero forward flight and we're idle. Ah, not idle. Collective is down. So rates of descent going down towards 1500 feet. So we've still got zero forward flight. You can see the rotor RPM has gone up to 470, which is why I'm getting the horn, so to speak. And all I have to do is apply some power and the uh, descent rate is stopped. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll try a little bit of auto rotation. So we're kind of over the resort. Uh, we'll just go for the flight idle option here. Dump the collective, we aim for the beach. Rotor RPM is going up, 420. Can't see anything, can't see anything. Can I make it to the shoreline? A little bit firm, but I'm here, I made it. The auto rotation is possible. All right, let's go back to flying. Let's throw this thing around. Right, let's just cruise on down here before we get some height and speed for some aerobatics, just show you some of the scenery. This scenery is put together by Clifford. It's um, not his own 3D modeling. It's just a collection of assets available, but put together in such a nice way that you can you can spend hours just having a look around at the different things. So you've got a nice restaurant down there. Got a chap in a jet ski. Looks like some first class villas down here with some speedboats, some canoes. Uh, some nice bridges. Uh, in the other bays, you have other little pontoon uh, positions to land on. We'll have a look at some, uh, some rooftop helicopter pads. There's another helicopter pad down here, uh, kind of close to the swimming pool. I mean, just look how much detail is in it. You've got the large boat. You can land on the front of the large boat. But it looks absolutely brilliant. Right, let's try and put it upside down because I always have to go upside down in whatever I'm flying. If you haven't seen my Antonov AN225 video, it's worth checking that out. Right, we are 100 knots. Let's see what happens. She doesn't seem to care. Ugh. So yes, I know the 125 isn't an aerobatic helicopter, but if you want to throw it around, you absolutely can. I mean, she's certainly a looker. Really good looking helicopter. Really difficult to fly from the outside. <laughs> but not impossible. So what I'm going to do now is just show you a couple of the really nice points of interest around the scenery pack. And maybe one or two approaches, and there's some of the most challenging approaches in here that I've ever done. The nice thing I find in the helicopter is it's fairly easy to fly to an okay standard, but really, really hard to fly precisely. There's a little jetty there, which I'll just do a flyby in a minute, but if I pull around to the right, and this is what I mean about the adventurous nature of the scenery pack, there is a little luxury villa here with its own helicopter pad and a nice oriental garden. So 
But this scenery is just so alive with different things. I mean, the flamingos are one thing. The moving boats are excellent. I'm trying to get too fast as I approach the jetty. I'm not going to land here because I'll embarrass myself. Yeah, for the birds. But you can see on the uh, on the jetty there's some kids playing, which is awesome. I mean, how crazy does that look? Sorry, I know I'm probably giving them quite the downwash. All right, next we're going to have a look at a military facility, so we're going to cruise on around here. But here is a military facility, and it has tanks, it has Hueys, it has even a Chinook. It's got decent night lighting as well, so the helicopter pads have green flashing H's in. You definitely don't see this sort of military uh, stuff by default in Microsoft Flight Sim, and unfortunately this is for PC only. But that is very cool indeed. Let's head on to the next one. Okay, so here's one of my favourite parts of the scenery. This has a nice villa inset into the hillside. Really nice boat out here. Let's just try a bit of a pedal turn from, I guess, around about 100 knots. See how quickly we can slow this thing down. Bit of a climb, but I'll take it. You can land on the uh, on the front of the ship if you want to. Instead, I'm going to try my best and land in the hillside. And once we've done this, I will skip forward to a nighttime scene and just show you what the interior lighting looks like. We're almost at the end of the video, so let me know in the comments below what you think of the helicopter. Call me out on anything that I've done wrong in the helicopter because I am a fixed wing pilot. But I do enjoy the subtleties of trying to get this thing precisely landed. So here we go. A nice house down there with a pool, everyone enjoying themselves. We're about to have their martinis tipped over. Just approaching with the nose slightly to the left, so I've got a better view of the uh, landing spot. You can see the roof of the house beneath me, so I need to make sure my boom doesn't hit that. So I kind of need to go overhead the H and then down on top of it, which is really, really disconcerting, especially when I don't have a horizon to really use. That's See if we can turn it around a little bit. Oh, this is working out all right. This is one of my better ones. Don't lose it now. Don't lose it now. Hey, save the best to last. Awesome. So we need to get airborne from this really tight space, so it's important to remember that this sits right skid low, so as you apply some collective, just allow it to sit on its right skid, a bit of back pressure on the cyclic, and then try and keep as stable as possible, especially in such a small gap like this. And then what we'll do is we're going to depart over this way, so slightly different to the way we came in, and now I'll do some uh, maybe steep turns, just rage it around a little bit, see how the handling is. one of those campsites I mentioned. Here we go, what are we doing? We are setting up about 50 or 60 torque. About 60 knots. And around the boat. I love these little windows at the top, very useful. So we are sat about 50, maybe 55 degrees angular bank. About 75 knots it looks like. And it's very stable. Let's try taking it up against some cliffs, watching out for the boats. <laughs> oh, I do enjoy throwing things around. Let's do a... What is this called? A pedal turn? A wing over? What is it? Oh, down towards the shadow. Alright, I think that's enough fun for one day. 
let's go and check out the night lighting on this thing. I promise you some night lighting, so what better place to do that than a very dark, wet, drizzly Arya Valley in Wales? We've also changed the livery to the Defence Helicopter Flying School just to make it look a bit more authentic. And the wetness on the ground looks absolutely brilliant, and overall it fits in nicely with the surroundings. Uh, so some of the lighting you see in here is the ambient lighting from what you see outside, but what I'm going to do is going to fly away from here so that you can get to see what it looks like properly at night time. A uh, quick tour of the lighting systems then. We have system lights, which is the buttons to the right of the engine instrumentation. We also have instrument panel lights. It looks really nice with them switched off, to be honest, in the ambient lighting, but we'll put a little bit of lighting on the instrumentation. And we also have the ability to change the uh, dimness of the engine indicators there, off, bright, and night time, I guess that is. Uh, overhead we have dimple lights, they're switched on at the minute, but you can dim them as required and they give you uh, this lighting here. So put them on a little bit. Uh, and the final point, uh, the lighting's for the uh, outside, so we've got landing lights and taxi lights, as well as the anti-coal lights, which are, where are they? There they go, anti-coals are the switch on the front. And altogether they are very, very bright indeed. So I think it's time to go and fly this at night. Like I said earlier, it's uh, not fun flying a helicopter at night, but we'll try our best. There we go, not going to go too high, so I've got some reference on the ground. Let's cruise on over to the T6s. This is a uh, freeware scenery as well, available on flightsim.to, I think, unless it got removed. But I use this quite regularly. There's lots of good stuff to explore around here. Okay, let's cruise on down here towards the runway, where it is very dark indeed. I'll try my best not to get disorientated. Wow, look at the mist that that's picking up. This is looking good. Where's the runway? Is it here? Yeah, more or less. Look at the rain effect on the windshield as well. That's looking really nice indeed. Okay, there is no chance in heck that I'm going to be able to fly this and play around with the light. So let's put, put this down before I crash. This is a little bit of a phenomenon going on with the lights as I move the uh, camera around. Not sure why that is. Nothing massive, I guess. Okay, so now we're in pitch black. You can get a better idea of what uh, the overhead lighting looks like. This is on bright, bright, there you go. If I switch the outside lights off, landing lights, taxi lights. And then if I switch off the overhead panels, and we just have the lighting on the front. That's the end of the video. Let me know what you think of this helicopter in the comments below. I think it is a very nice helicopter indeed. It looks fantastic. I love the fact that you have 100 deliveries. I love the fact you have four variants. I would really like to see it developed a bit more so there's an iPad just to make it really easy to click the different options and maybe separate the models out into different options prior to actually getting in flight. But the fact there's so much to dig into with this helicopter is a great thing. Um, there's a few little bits of uh, roughness here and there in terms of the resolution, maybe of the medical uh, utility pack and the interaction with the water which is kind of unusual but overall they've done a outstanding job on this and i'm sure if you do decide to get this you'll have a lot of fun with it uh, but until the next time take care fly safe and thanks for watching